And another half hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Go back and enjoy life with the Andersons. Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim. As the head of this typical American household, the Andersons are to prove that father knows that. comes to many families, there came last week to the white frame house on Maple Street an automatic wash. Ever since this singular event, the service porch has been the center of attraction in the Anderson household, particularly for Kathy, for whom the machine seems to have a fatal fascination. Like this. Mommy, can I wash this tablecloth? Heaven, no, that's clean. I just now put it on the table for lunch. Well, maybe you can spill a lot of stuff on it, and I'll do another batch after lunch. After lunch, you've got to get back to school, and I wish you'd leave that poor machine alone. Well, I'll just run this one back here. Margaret, I'm home. In the kitchen, dear. Oh. Hi. Lunch ready? In just about. Sit down. I'll have things ready in a jiffy. Okay. Where are all the young citizens? Oh, well, but not home yet. Betty's upstairs, and <laughs> you can guess where Kathy is. She's going to wear that washer out before I can pay for it. <laughs> running a washer or flying a spaceship. <laughs> well, I wish I knew. It's 13. It's on its way to Mars, sir. <laughs> oh, hello, Daddy. Hi, Kitty. Got anything you want, Mars? No. It's not too late to find something else in. How about your shirt, Daddy? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> At least let us get our clothes off before you wash them. <laughs> Sit down, Angel. The others will be here in a minute. And another thing, Kathy. Don't swipe all the clothes out of my closet and chunk them in that thing. I could only find one sock this morning. <laughs> Man has to dress fast around this house if he wants to go out fully clothed. Who's ready, Mom? Oh, hi, Dad. Hello, son. Sit down, Dad. Everything's on. Okay. Dad, I want to ask you a question. Uh-oh. Sounds bad. Thanks, Brad. What noodle knows we're talking? Well, get law. Ah, it turns blue. Children. Children, don't start fighting the minute you get home. No, it's best to wait ten minutes or so. <laughs> you keep quiet now, big mouth. Let's just stop the whole thing. Now, what's this big idea of yours? Well, what it's actually doing is saving you $14.95. I'll bet. Well, it is. Sort of. Go on. Well, you know us guys have been wanting a collapsible canoe, and that's how much they cost. Yes, I've been made very well aware of that. But we're not going to get one. Good. We're building a raft instead. Oh, a raft? Yeah. So... Go on, I'm brave. So, uh... Whatever it is, how much is it going to cost? Well, actually, you're saving nine ninety five. What happened to the fourteen ninety five? I was going to say? You're taking five dollars of that to rent a trailer and help us get the raft to the river. Oh, I am, huh? This Saturday. Well, I don't know. I think it's dangerous for you boys to be out on a homemade raft. It can sink, Dad. We got two old oil drums under it. I know. And but... we got a sail for it. Just a minute. I'll get it and show you. Where'd you get a sail? Well, we were covering off an old mattress. Kathy, run upstairs and see what's keeping Betty. Mom, what did you do with our sale? I didn't touch it. I left it right by the back porch this morning when I... Kathy. Huh? Look me in the eye, shrimp. I'm just washing the old thing. Your chin needs it, too. Had black paint all over it. That black paint was all insignia, skull and crossbones. The paint wasn't even dry yet. Oh, heavens, now we've got a washer full of paint. Kathy, go upstairs and don't come down till I tell you to. But, Mommy... Go on now. I told you to leave that machine alone and you wouldn't listen. Go on. Yes, Mommy. Sabotage her. But I'll handle it. Margaret, aren't we being a little rough on Kathy? After all, she didn't mean anything by it. Maybe not, but she's been driving you crazy with that machine all week. I know, but <laughs> I thought it was sort of amusing. 
We've got to have a little discipline around here. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that girl. I've got a couple of suggestions. <laughs> Margaret, you're getting upset over nothing. Mother? Well, it's about time, Betty. Everything's cold now. Well, I haven't time to eat. Where's that new silk dress of mine? I want to wear it this afternoon. To school? Well, that's a party dress. Well, the least a girl can do is look respectable. A dress is very important. What are we sending you to, college or a fashion show? I wouldn't care if it was just Mr. Stoffer. But you can't expect a substitute to look at a bunch of needle heads. Really, Father? What to do with that? Instructor. Mr. Fawcett is sick, and this Mr. Wardlow is taking his place. Oh, oh Mother, he absolutely dreamy. Oh? But devastatingly dreamy. Oh, gone. So that's it. Oh, Father, you're so utterly comic stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is. I was just going to suggest that if you go out to the basketball team, I'll get you a secret midi blouse and some mink boomers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who asked you anything, Smarty? I didn't say anything. Well, it was the way you didn't say it. How do you like that? A guy says nothing and she makes a federal case out of it. <laughs> it's what you were thinking. Holy cow. What do we have to do around here? Stop thinking? If we did, I doubt if we'd notice the change. <laughs> well, anyway, I've got to have that dress, Mother. You should have seen how Jamie Liggett was all gussied up. She thinks she was Lana Turner. Well, I wonder... I wonder how she knew we were going to have Mr. Wardlow today. That little sneak. Oh, uh, Betty, I don't know where the dress could be if it isn't... Wait a minute. Kathy, are you still downstairs? No, I'm upstairs. You are not. Come in here and hurry. What do you want, Mommy? You know what I want. Did you take a dress out of Betty's closet? Well, did you? Well, it has some spots on it and... Oh, no. Is it in the washer now? Is it? Uh-huh. Oh, my dress. I'll die if it's ruined. I'll die. All right, young lady. Upstairs with you. Mark. Yes, Mommy. And don't hang around outside the door listening either. Grim, Grim. Oh, turn green. <laughs> well, Jim, do Kathy's strength still seem so amusing? Well, personally, I'm glad she put the dress in there. What? The purpose of higher education is not to snag an instructor. Oh, now, Jim. I don't care how dreamy he is. <laughs> All right. But as far as Kathy's strength... I think Kathy deserves a vote of commendation. Oh, well, now I've heard everything. Please pass the food. Look at it, Mother. Look at it. It's a ruined mess. It's not ruined at all. But I can't wear it today. Oh, what'll I do? Well, what you got on? Beard rug? This outfit might frustrate my whole education. Um. <laughs> what was that crack? I'm just trying to get somebody to pass the cream. <laughs> it didn't sound like it. Okay, Salula. <laughs> but that's enough. Betty, that outfit looks very nice. And if this Mr. Wardlow has any sense, he'll see that you're dressed in better taste than Jamie. Well, he practically scared at Jamie all through typing in half a shorthand. Well, I wouldn't worry about him then. Burn. Yeah, I'll pass the broom. I haven't been able to get them yet. Let's see the dress. How can you tell what it looks like? I wrought it up like this. For goodness sake, what's all this inside of it? It's like some papers of some kind. Papers? Or letters. And some old checks. At least they were checks. Checks? Let me see those. Hey, these are my canceled checks. This is my bank statement. Or what's left of it. Wait till I get my hands on that child. Oh, now, Jim. This must have come in the mail today. Why does she want to wash the mail? Kathleen! <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, calm down. This is all very amusing, remember? It might be amusing to you, but those sample checks are important records. Kathleen! Now, Jim. What goes on in that child's mind, anyway? Oh, it's just being amusing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking about, bud? 
I'm not, I'm not snickering. I, I was just, uh, just getting ready to ask for the cream. <laughs> what ever prevents her to throw the mail in the washer? I don't think how she got hold of it. I know that I took it out of the mailbox myself, and... See, I put it in my apron pocket, and I... And what apron? Oh, my goodness, it's gone. She must have taken it off me when I was busy. <laughs> now, this has got to be punished for this. Kathleen! Let's see the rest of that mess. Probably loaded with important letters. Well, I don't know whether you can tell much about them. This one's a bill. You can be sure that's the one that would come through, would take. <laughs> and here's a bill on the washer. I don't know whether to pay it or sue them for damages. Uh, hi, Daddy. Did you call me? Yes, I did. Come in and sit down there. I want to talk to you. As soon as I get through ringing out the mail. Yes, sir. Hey, but as near as I can make out, this is a letter for you. For me? Guys, who's it from? You'll probably never know. <laughs> Holy cow. Why, Dad, what's the matter? Holy jumping cow. What's the matter, Dad? Look at this letter. It's from the police department. The police department? Well, what do they want? I'm supposed to appear there within seven days. What for? Oh, I don't know. The rest of the letter's been washed away. Never mind. Let me see that thing. Holy cow. Here I'm being sent to jail and I don't even know what for. <laughs> we will return to the Andersons in just a moment. One ten dollar care package equals about a month's ration for a person in Britain. And for such help, Money is no substitute. However, when you help through care, you know that your money is all going in the package. Because care is non-profit. To have a food or textile care package delivered, simply mail a check to Care Los Angeles or Care New York. <laughs> started out to be a quiet, normal, noonday lunch at the White Frame House on Maple Street has suddenly become a scene of confusion and turmoil, largely centering around a letter from the police department addressed to Bud. And now, in the vernacular of the law, the heat is on. Like this. Well, now think hard, Bud. You must have done something. They wouldn't call you down to the police station for nothing. Oh, dear. I can't think of any crimes I committed. Lately. <laughs> Wouldn't it be simpler to just go down to the police station and find out what this is all about? It's bound to be a mistake. Well, I don't want to go down there. We're sure of our ground. Now, uh, concentrate, Bud. Maybe you fellas took something that didn't belong to you, or... Uh... Hey, you don't suppose... No, it couldn't be that. Couldn't be what? Heck, they're all rusty. <sighs> I'm sure it's sending away. What are you talking about? There's oil drums on our air. Oh, I see. And just where did you get those? They're all rusty. I know, but where did you get them? Well, we sort of picked them up out in the alley. Back of old man Fumble's place. Don't call him old man Fumble. I'll bet he's 40. Who isn't? <laughs> now listen, bud. I'm sure he's coming away. They were just laying out there by the alley. Well, that's not for you to decide. You should have asked him. Chances are he would have given them to you. But this way, well, you might as well face it. It's stealing. No, no, wait a minute, Jim. Aren't you jumping at conclusions? You don't know that Mr. Trumbo reported that to the police? Well, I know that Ed Davis had trouble with him over some property line, some little insignificant thing, but Trumbo hauled him into court and beat him. Well, even if that was true, he's not going to make this much fuss over a couple of old oil cans. Well, it's not the oil drums with him. It's the principle of the thing. What he's doing is striking back at me through bus. At you? Why, you hardly know him. Remember that year I was elected president of the country club? Mm -hmm. Well, Trumbull was the fellow I beat out. And he's held a grudge against me ever since. I didn't know that. Oh, sure. Time and again, I tried to sell him fire insurance on his building. And a couple of times, he wouldn't even see me. Yeah, it still sounds pretty small, I think. Well, it's Trumbull for you. Uh-oh, they're closing in on me. <laughs> I want to... Bud, right, come back here. Don't go down in the basement and hide. It's my only chance. Do I just 
surprise, my boy? No. Hello? Bud? Yes, he's here. See, I told you. Bud, come back here. Oh, well, just a minute. I'll find out. It's so good, Bud. Are you sure? Just tell Joe. Bud will see him later. Wasn't he with you on this deal? Well, yeah, but I was the one that actually got the oil drums. You see, I volunteered. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah. First we matched, and I lost, so then I volunteered. <laughs> well, that is a brilliant maneuver. <laughs> Jim, can't you phone Mr. Trumbull and get him to call this silly thing off if he really did report bad? That's just what I'm going to do. Look up his office number for me, bud. I think it's uh, W.J. Trumbull. Okay. Yes, I thought there was going to be more to it than fair. Kathy, you better get on your way to school. Might as well. We've got the dollar family. Uh, here it is, Dad. Oxford, 8891. Okay. Uh, he's probably out to lunch now. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Uh, goodbye. How do you like that? What now? He said he was over at the city hall. Something about some oil tanks, he said. Well, I never would have thought he'd get over two old rusty cans. We've got to start building a case here. Bud, I want you to tell me everything you can remember about this. Mother! What is it, Daddy? I thought you'd gone. He just dropped up too early to be in on me. Oh, me. Plebeian, yes. <laughs> Who does it, Mother? Are you still worrying about that part-time professor? He's not part-time. He's a full-time substitute. <laughs> Betty, put on what you had on before. It's much more sensible and appropriate, believe me. Oh, sensible. You people don't understand anything. Let's see. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, we're going to build a case here. Now, Bud, give me all the details. Okay. Now, exactly when did this happen? It was the same day I went down and got my bicycle license. Well, good. When was that? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, wait a minute. I can tell when that was. They gave me a slip with a license, and it had the date on it. Well, where is it? I put it in my wallet. It's right here. Holy hey, cow, it's gone. I lost my wallet. Kathy, did you put Bud's wallet in the washing machine? No, I didn't get it. I had a buck and a half in it, and some peanuts. <laughs> in your wallet? Well, you can't just carry them around loose. <laughs> You lost the wallet when you were getting those oil drums, and Mr. Trumbull found it. And that's how he knew it was you. That's where your wallet is. Well, he can have the peanuts, but I want that buck and a half back. <laughs> Me? You can arrest Mr. Trumbull for taking that wallet. Yeah, how about that, Dan? Father, Father, do you drive me to school? I don't mind, Betty. I've got to get this thing with Bud straightened out. But I forgot. This is the day they take me through some big company to show us how a big office is run. Oh, I can just see Jamie walking alongside of Mr. Wardlow, hanging on him, wobbling along in those high heels. Hope she breaks her ankle. <laughs> well, if you hurry, you can still make it. No, I can't. We were supposed to get back early. I'll call and see if there's left yet. Holy cow. She's worried about that junk, and I'm on my way to the penitentiary. <laughs> Mr. Wardlow's class is left on that trip yet? Huh? Mr. Wardlow? Why, yes. This is, um, uh, well, well, my name is Betty Anderson. Betty Anderson. <laughs> and I wanted to find out if the class had... Oh, they have. You? You? Oh, it's just like seven maple. Yes, Mr. Wardlow. Goodbye. Oh, Mother, Mother, did you hear what he said? Oh, it's so thrilling. Well, don't keep us in suspense. He said the class went ahead in a bus. Now, there's the most thrilling news I've ever heard. <laughs> and Mr. Wardlow is going to take me in his car alone. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, Kathy, baby, how can I ever thank you? Don't call me baby. If you hadn't made me late, this never would have happened. Oh, I love you, Kathy. Do 
that's a dirty trick. He said that right after I thought of some real mean things to say to her. <laughs> now that we've got that momentous problem solved, let's figure this thing out, bud. Uh-oh. I bet that's the cops. They're closing in. Bud, come back. <laughs> Don't go down in the basement and hide. That's no kind of a plan. Well, if you think of a better one, let me know. I'll <laughs> be down in the basement. Now, wait, Bud. Father, there's a man here to see you. All right, Betty. See, Bud, it's not for you at all. I think he said his name was Crumble. Crumble? Crumble? Oh, my gosh, I'm trapped. Bud, come back. Oh, well. You tell him to call this whole silly thing off. Don't worry, I'll handle him. He's in the living room, Father. Okay. Come back, Kathy. You can't go in there with him. Gee whiz. Well, Mr. Trumbull. Hello there, Anderson. Interrupting your lunch? No, no. We uh, we weren't very hungry today. And I, I saw your car in the driveway, so I figured you were home, and I wanted to get this matter taken care of as quickly as possible. Well, that's the way I felt about it, too. Good. I didn't want to go to your office because I want to keep this sort of quiet for the time being. Well, I don't blame you. Now, <clears throat> I was wondering, just as a starting figure, what would you say to $5,000? 5000 $5, <laughs> What is this, blackmail? Well, if I've got to go higher, I will. I've got to have full power coverage. Confidentially, Anderson, how did you find out I was buying those oil tanks west of town? I just recorded the purchase at the city hall not over half an hour ago. Oh, I... I... <laughs> well, I... I guess that's your business, but uh, I must say you were on the ball, Anderson. That's one thing that influenced me to throw this business your way. Well, that's fine, Mr. Trumbull. Yes, uh, just so to bear on an old theory of mine about success being based on being at the right place at the right time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, a man has to be on his toes, too. Oh, yes, yes, on the ball. Yeah, well, uh, bring some figures to my office, Anderson, and I think we can do business. Well, wonderful, Mr. Trumbull. But uh, uh, this thing with Bud... This thing was what? Uh, Bud, my son. Well, yes, yes, I've seen him around. Fine boy. Fine boy. <laughs> but, uh, what about the old uh, oil drums? Oil drums? Well, I don't know whether I can get them any or not. I had a couple of old rusty ones around the place, but I put them out for the trash man. The trash man? Oh, well, forget it. Bud may have gotten some himself. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, I'll see you this afternoon. So long. Yes, so long, Mr. Trumbull. Margaret? Margaret? You don't need to tell me. I heard the whole thing. Yeah, we needed you. <laughs> Margaret, do you realize this to be the biggest contract I've written in three years? It'll put me way out ahead in the district contest. Yeah, but what about me? Oh, did Dillinger finally come out of hiding? <laughs> I told the old man Trumbull wasn't after him. Well, I never did think so. But what about that letter from the police? I'm still wanted. Why, golly, that's right. Now we don't know what for. Well, there's just one thing to do. Let's sit down and figure this out. Figure it out, nothing. I know what to do. Now, just take it easy, Margaret. Where the law is concerned, it's always best... Who are you calling Hello, operator. Will you please give me the police department? Now, Margaret, don't do that. We've got to know our facts. Please. Hello? This is Mrs. James Anderson. And our son got a letter from you asking him to appear, but we uh, uh, lost it. Uh, could you find out what was in that letter? Bud Anderson, 607 Maple. Oh, no, I feel this is the wrong approach. Thank you. They're going to look up a copy of it. Margaret, I wish you'd leave these things to me. Dad, how does it feel to be a criminal? Hello? Yes, please do. What are they saying? Oh, yes. Well, thank you very much. I'll see that he gets there. Goodbye. Holy cow, Mom. Why did you tell him that? 
Well, you want your peanuts back, don't you? Huh? When you got your bicycle license, you left your wallet there, and they want you to come down and claim it. The Andersons will be back in just a moment. Now another word for care. Official figures estimate that 42% of all South Koreans are refugees. If you want to help, you can send money for food, clothing, warm blankets, all the things so desperately needed to non-profit care. Care packages are saving lives in Korea, distributed by teams of dedicated men from the United Nations Civil Assistance Command. But somebody has to help pay for the packages. If you will help, please mail the money, whatever it is, to Care for Korea. Address Care Los Angeles or Care New York. Well, all legal matters involving members of the White Frame House on Maple Street have been straightened out. Daughter Betty is in heaven in the company of Instructor Wardlow. And Kathy, the terror of the automatic washer, has been acquitted on all counts. The last of the children have been scuttled off to school, and Jim is about to return to his office. I did. Well... I hope we don't have any more lunches like this. It was rugged. Yes. Well, maybe we all learned something from it. I know now I was wrong in being so hard with Kathy. About the washing machine. Well, it's easy to fall into something like that. I can see these things more clearly than you because I'm not so close to them. Well, of course, there's one or two things you should have learned. Oh, say, I don't want to forget my briefcase. I've got to get those figures for Crumble and make out some contracts. Now, where is that thing? I put it right here on the chair... Margaret, what's the matter? I um, must have put those tablecloths on top of it. What tablecloth? The one Kathy put in the washing machine. Jim, your briefcase. Not in the... All my papers? Oh, no! cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Norma Jean Nilsson, Rhoda Williams, and Bill Foreman. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. NBC. There's an imperial roundtable of entertainment tomorrow evening on the NBC radio network. For music on Friday, listen to the Mario Lanza Show with the royal troubadour of radio, Mario Lanza. In the comedy department, Friday means those court jesters, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. And for Western song and adventure, tune for the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. You'll hear them all tomorrow on the NBC radio network. Now, it's Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on NBC.